Hello, Candace and Western fans. It's time for construction update number 14 of the Candace and Western HO Scale Railroad. First, we're going to run over the uh, track plan again real quick. This here is the uh, bottom level, the staging level, and all the track. Although the track representation isn't quite accurate because it became a, a five track staging yards uh, instead of four. That's the layout. That's what it looks like. That level's all done. Then moving up here to the middle level, this represents Colorado. You've got the hel helices on the left-hand side there, big peninsula down the middle. Uh, there's La Junta Yard uh, with Lamar, uh, Lamar on the left, Holly right there. And then you've got Pueblo, Canyon City, and then uh, the scenic Royal Gorge type area, this whole uh, side here. And then moving up to the top level, you've got the Kansas representation. Helices there on the left, a huge peninsula down the middle is the Wichita Rail Yard. And then at the top, you've got the El Dorado Refinery. On the left side, you've got Union Tank Car Company. And then that moves to more in El Dorado Industries, Tawanda there in the middle, uh, Wichita Industries down this side. And then you've got the Charleston Elevator, and then Garden City, and the Holcomb Power Plant. So now we'll rotate around to take an overview of the whole room to see what I've gotten done. And I'll just do a quick once through of the whole room, and then we'll start at the beginning. That uh, leg there is about 15 feet long by about 5 feet wide, and then this room here is about 26 feet long by 15 feet wide. Okay, back to the beginning. We won't cover the staging level because there's not much to talk about there. So we'll just talk about the start here. And again, this is Tennessee Pass where it'll come out of a tunnel. And then this whole stretch down here will be Arkansas River mountain backdrop. We'll do a single track main line with a, a siding on the side for some run around options if needed uh, or passing siding. And then moving along, and I've got all the lighting done and the entire layout, except for a single strip of LEDs that I need to add here. And that'll be done here in another day or two. Moving around, more Arkansas River, wrapping around this curve until we reach Canyon City, where there'll be a couple different sightings. The one in the foreground will serve uh, the Canyon City train station, where there'll be excursion trains uh, for the Royal Gorge route. And in the background, uh, will serve several sightings for the Portland cement plant located uh, southeast of Canyon City. Then the line runs around. I had talked about in previous videos about maybe extending this area for the Portland cement plant. Decided that wasn't really necessary because it didn't really gain me much because at some point the main line has to go over to the other side and I couldn't really work out how to place the plant and have the main line go through without it being kind of awkward. So I decided to leave it as it was. And that's okay because it leaves a pretty wide area for walking, passing for several operators. And I wasn't sure I'd engineered enough of that into the plan, so I'm not unhappy with it. And then this happy accident where my workstation neatly fits right underneath the, the end of the Wichita yard. Right now I'm just using this folding table, but I think now that I have this space carved out, I'm going to custom build a desk that will fill the entire thing. Maybe put like a backdrop um, on one side so I can build some small shelves for paints and so forth. So I kind of look forward to seeing how that takes shape. But then the lighting, all I did was just add LED strips underneath. And I think that's going to be more than enough with the ambient room lighting helping out. So that's a neat little accent that's going to work as far as I can tell. I know there's that corner for the helix that's going to support, but I think as long as I stay seated on this end, shouldn't be a problem, especially if I can remove these legs with a built-in. Shouldn't be an issue. So we'll see how that goes. Moving around, Christmas present, awesome, thank you, in -law. thank you in-laws. When we come to the other side, where Pueblo is, I'm basically pausing mainline construction at this point because I need to build several industries that are gonna fit in the background here. And I need to make sure what the size is gonna work out to be before I place the main line so I don't leave myself too little space for sightings and spurs. But basically, you know, a fuel distribution plant or a terminal here. Uh, there's a newspaper in Pueblo that's near the tracks that's served by a spur. 
and then there's a food distribution uh, company that I'll probably plant in the corner that'll help hide the the abrupt 90 degree turn back there. So that's what I have planned for Pueblo. And then I think in the foreground, the rail yard in Pueblo passes right by the Arkansas River again. And I, I, I say that name of the river several times because this entire rail line uh, from Southwest Kansas, uh, well into Colorado, crosses the Arkansas River several times and basically parallels it, probably why it was laid there. So it's close to water for steam engines. So it is going to feature highly in the layout, and that's not necessarily by choice, it's just by reality. That's the way the prototype is, and I'm trying to follow it uh, when I can. So in the foreground here, more Arkansas River. I'm going to try to do the concrete embankment that you can see on Google Earth, see how that looks. Maybe try some uh, different kinds of graffiti or whatnot on it that you usually find on those kinds of things, but that's the plan for that. And then we move into La Junta Yard. I've got most of the track installed, at least for the main body. I was able to get most of my rolling stock um, visible instead of all hidden in staging, so it's nice to be able to see what I have again. Still have to solder, still have to wire, so uh, only a few of the tracks operate. If you saw my operations video from a few days ago, uh, you could see that the east end of La Junta does work uh, for a few of the tracks. So definitely working on that for the next video to get that up, up and operational. Got a car maintenance shed here under construction and then actually had the presence of mind to include plans for a programming track right here in the foreground that I'll be able to isolate from the rest of the layout so I can program locomotives without screwing anything else up. But It'll also serve as a rip track and then we'll have diesel servicing here with sand towers and fuel and so on. Moving down. Since the yard is a little bit short, uh, just because the space concerns, I think I am going to add uh, a couple of storage tracks down here. Uh, still gonna have the maintenance away yard uh, there in the background where the boxcars are. And then I think I'm still gonna do a um, transload ramp uh, probably at the end of this first track near the aisle. And then just have a couple tracks for uh, storage so we can move some cars out of the main body track and just get them out of the way. Moving around the corner, now we've got Lamar. I've got all the track in here installed. Still have to solder and wire, so it doesn't all work. But I did like the track plan. I was able to get started on a couple of the industries. I did go with the PVC idea uh, for this uh, oil seed refinery. So I got those cut to size. Still have to obviously construct the rest, but at least it gave me an idea for how much space it would start to take up so I could get a track laid. And then this will be that warehouse that I've mentioned. I'm not sure what it is, but it's two silos and I've used part of a uh, plastic pellet distribution kit to start this. And then with an elevator, they serve this long warehouse that I'll kit bash and probably cut in half and just lay against the backdrop here uh, to represent that. And then Small Lamar, one of the small Lamar elevators will be built there with a couple of grain bins to also kind of help hide this corner where I've installed my first piece of uh, backdrop. Moving around to Holly, the only main um, upgrade here is again that first piece of backdrop, which obviously will be painted. I do plan to do the photorealistic backdrops, uh, the vinyls at some point. Uh, it's just not a big priority right now. Obviously, those will go in before I start any scenery work, uh, so it's not impossible to put in. But in the meantime, I'm just going to paint them blue because I really liked having that color in the background. Helps brighten the room and uh, serves as a good temporary backdrop, so that'll get painted soon. And then moving over to the East Helix. Nothing new for the Holcomb Power Plant area. And Garden City, uh, the rest of the backdrop. So these two pieces up here and down there are a single piece of 4x8 sheet masonite. And it just worked out where I could rip to fit this, the bottom piece and then the leftovers worked out to fill this space almost completely. And I know it's a lot taller backdrop than is really necessary because of just how a viewer looks, but rather than rip it again for a smaller piece that I'm not sure what I would do with because I think another piece that would fit down here would leave too little above uh, for my taste. So single four by eight sheet will work out great for the whole rest of the round of the room. So that that's just kind of a happy accident as far as I'm concerned. 
Uh, laid a little bit of track here, more just cork to uh, develop the main line on the upper level. And this is a Charleston elevator. I'm still working out how I want the main line to run here. Not a lot of options, obviously, because it's only 12 inches wide. And then it has to make the curve to get around the corner. But that's what I'm working on there. And then moving around. This is the beginning of the Wichita industrial area. Several different industries planned, which will take you down to the Wichita yard. And again, I've mentioned this is kind of the centerpiece of the layout, which is why it's so huge. And I've started a PVC grain elevator, uh, representative of the major grain elevator that used to be in service. I'm not sure when it went out of service, but it's pretty big. Runs right down the middle of the yard. I think I'm going to need somewhere around 60 of these uh, for a double elevator. Uh, in the prototype, there's actually two elevators back to back, which is about 300 silos. And I'm not going to do that because it would eat up too much of the yard trackage. So I think about 60 with a head house in the middle will about do it, which will make it about seven or eight feet long in total. I've been trying to find videos of uh, the biggest HO scale elevators to kind of compare, and I haven't really had any success. So if anybody has any links to huge HO scale grain elevators, uh, send them along so I can have a look. I'd appreciate it. But then you see this is one long rail yard. The track that you see laid out are seven pieces of flex track that are three feet long. So obviously quick math, that's a 21 foot long rail yard. This may seem a little ridiculous and I don't, honestly don't care because this is kind of uh, something that's inspired me for a long time to build this. And so it's gonna get its due, but big rail yard, lots of trains, lots of locomotives. Uh, it'll come back down this way, stub end again. I chose not to do a Y because I really couldn't figure out how to make it work at this end didn't really like the electrical part of it uh, and it's fine because it's a stub end um, rail service on the, the other direction anyway so it's not that big a deal but engine servicing facilities on this side and then moving around i think i'll do a cement distribution terminal here in this corner tuan will be located in this corner and then it moves down to the el dorado area with several industries and the elevator refinery will sit on top of this helix. Definitely going to do more than just a single refinery kit, just because I think that's too small for the space I have. So probably be a, a Coke terminal, a pet Coke terminal, several loading racks, propane tanks, so on and so forth. And then moving across in front of the electrical panel, this is the only part I haven't got done much work-wise, is this removable bridge I'm going to build. And right now I just have a leftover piece of helix subroad bed I've got laid out to envision what it's going to look like. The main line will pass behind the refinery so we can cross over. And then this is where the Union Tank Car Company will be located with about a four or five track yard structures here in the background. This is a removable piece here in front of the window in case I ever need to remove that for window things. But uh, that's it. The bench work is basically done. Very excited. It's turned out basically like I had envisioned with very few problems. Center wise, I didn't quite get this main part done. The overhang here is about four inches narrower than the overhang of the middle. And then on this side, it's about 10 inches. So I didn't quite get that centered properly, but I don't care. It's fine. It'll be just fine. So big project, no doubt about it. But now the fun stuff starts where I just get to build lots of structures, lay lots of track. Um, I wouldn't say the, the bench work part is boring, but it just seems like it's the, the part you have to get through to, the, to get to the fun stuff. I definitely recommend, though, laying track as soon as you can, just so you can enjoy the reason that you're doing all this. But it is obviously easier to get all the bench work done first. So any questions or comments, let me know. Appreciate all the feedback. Uh, that's all I have for now. Thank you.